Did you know that Whitebeard used to look like this? Or that Big Mom went from this happy little child to eating her friends alive? Or that Frankie almost joined Goldie Rogers' crew as a kid? Well, today we're gonna look at every single backstory in One Piece. Starting with the oldest character that we know of, which is uh, this elephant? Well, you see, this is actually a highly intelligent creature the size of four Mount Everest that was already alive during the Void Century and that was a companion of the legendary character called Joy Boy. The elephant's name is Zunisha and what we know for a fact is that it committed such a terrible crime that as a punishment, it has been ordered to walk the oceans for over 800 years waiting for the return of Joy Boy. Not only that, but during this extremely long time, a race of human-like animals called the Minx ended up building an entire country on its back. And speaking of super old characters, we also can't wait to learn more about other mysterious people from the Void Century like Joy Boy, who probably used to have Luffy's legendary devil fruit. Or Odin's wife Toki, who time traveled to the future. Or the secret king of the world, Emu, who seems to have been ruling from the shadows for all this time. In addition, characters like the Gorosei may also well be from the same time period as well, so hopefully Oda has a giant backstory prepared for us to explain the Void Century and all of the people who lived and fought during these last 100 years. And speaking of giant-sized backstories, we're moving on to these two giants who are some of the oldest characters in One Piece. Dory and Broggy are a crazy 160 years old. Both of them grew up on the island of giants called Elbaf and later formed their own pirate crew of giant warriors. However, at some point they started a really petty fight over who had hunted the large animal and so when Luffy and the crew meet them, they've actually been dueling for exactly 100 years. Which actually ended up creating a lot of trouble for the rest of their crew because without their captains, the two giants Oimo and Kashi were later blackmailed by the world government into working for them with the government pretending that they had captured their friends. And this guy here called Hairujin, he ended up as a gladiator fighting for the entertainment of others inside the massive arena on Dressrosa. But even bigger and older than these giants though was Ors. While he lived 500 years ago, this ancient giant was 159 years old at the time of his death. Allegedly, he was a terrible villain called the Continent Puller and after ravaging lands across the world, he froze to death in the icy northern continent waiting for the day that Moria would dig him up and revive him as a zombie. However, Ors also had a descendant called Little Ors Jr. Now, Little Ors Jr. was an ally of Whitebeard and helped during the Marineford War to free Ace because Ace had once gifted him a straw hat from the land of Wano. However, the first straw hat that we're actually gonna talk about today is the oldest one. Bro, this talking, singing skeleton has one of the most tragic backstories in all of One Piece. His crew, the Rumba Pirates, were friends with a young whale named Plum Laboon. Little Laboon loved to hear Brooke's music, but when the crew entered the Grand Line, they had to leave Laboon behind, promising that they'd meet back again one day. However, getting stuck in the Florian Triangle, which is basically the One Piece version of the infamous Bermuda Triangle, his entire crew slowly died of starvation. However, thanks to his Yomi Yomi no Mi, Brooke was revived after death and kept living on as a skeleton. He was cursed to continue wandering the mists of the Florian Triangle until he joined the Straw Hat Pirates. However, thankfully, even death couldn't get rid of that sweet, sweet afro. And up next is the former fleet admiral of the Marine. Sengoku. While he's now carefree and living his best life in retirement, we know from this childhood drawing that Oda made that he was actually very disciplined. Because as a child, we can see him practicing his calligraphy here, preparing him for a very long career of filing paperwork for Garp. Because on the other hand, this childhood drawing of Monkey D. Garp gives a very different impression. Garp is Luffy's grandfather, and we can definitely see the resemblance to Luffy because Garp absolutely looks more like a pirate as a kid than a marine. This wild child would grow up to be the hero of the marines. He took down terrible criminals like Don Xin Zhao, whose head he punched so hard it went from being pointy to round. Now Don Xin Zhao would never forgive him for ruining his perfectly spiky head and would try to carry out the grudge against Garb's grandson, Luffy. Not only that, but Garb also had a friendly rivalry with the pirate king, Goldie Roger. This pair of frenemies teamed up at God Valley to fight the Rocks Pirates. Now, we don't know anything about his past or where he came from. All we know is that Rox Dizabek has collected a crew of some of the most powerful pirates in the world. Legendary characters like Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, Shiki, or Stussy. With this crew of absolute monsters, Rock's ultimate goal was to destroy the Celestial Dragons and become the king of the world, but 
in the end was defeated by Roger and Garp together. And after the incident at God Valley, Garp became known as the hero of the Marines and Roger would become Pirate King. So let's talk about him for a second here. Some things that we know from Roger's past are that he originally owned Luffy's straw hat before passing it on to Shanks, who then in turn passed it on to Luffy. But most importantly, along with Kazuki Odin and the rest of his crew, he was the first person to ever reach the final island and find the One Piece. Whatever this treasure was, it must have been really funny because Roger burst out laughing when he found it and he decided to name the hidden island Love Tail. For some reason he had arrived to the treasure too early in his own words and unfortunately he also had contracted a deadly disease. And so he did everything in his power so that the right person would be able to find the island once again. After that Roger turned himself into the world government and announced the existence of the One Piece to the world starting the Grand Pirate Era as people scrambled to find his treasure. However before he died Roger did one more thing. He had fathered a son with a woman named Portgas de Rouge in secret, and before his execution, he had asked Garb to adopt this son. Even though Roger was a pirate and Garb was a marine, he trusted his longtime rival more than anyone to see to it that his son had a chance to live his life despite being related to the most wanted criminal. And Garp actually agreed to adopt that son who would go by the name of Ace and was raised as Luffy's brother. But we'll get to that in just a bit. First, we have to go back a little bit though, because we just skipped over some massive names right here. Let's talk about the remaining members of the Rock's pirate crew three of whom would even go on to become emperors of the sea. I mean, just look at this picture of Whitebeard as a kid. Can you believe that this guy grew up to become the world's strongest man? Not to mention that he used to have a serious nice head of hair. It does seem like he never did have an actual beard though. Now, Whitebeard grew up on this island that was too poor to pay the insanely high taxes to the world government and therefore had to defend itself from pirates and bandits on its own. This turned Whitebeard into one of the most powerful fighters in all of One Piece. And his crewmate Charlotte Lin Lin was the sweet sweet little girl here who didn't know her own strength. Her parents had abandoned her on Elbaf where her hunger pains led to her absolutely bodying some giants. Little Hydrogen for example who we mentioned earlier was even there as a kid as well. Fortunately though Mother Caramel was here to raise Lin Lin inside her orphanage. And Fortunately though, Mother Caramel was also a scam artist who sold orphans to the world governments. Double unfortunate, at the world's worst birthday party, Big Mom ate all of her friends and Mother Caramel alive along with her devil fruit, gaining her soul soul powers. After that, Big Mom built her food related empire, attracting numerous husbands along the way. Kaido was another rocks pirate with a seriously messed up childhood. Ever since he was a kid, he was used as a human weapon due to his immense strength. And then after a period as a government test subject, he found his way to the rocks pirates where Big Mom gave him his dragon devil fruit. And while he was a government test subject, he also broke out a fellow prisoner, Arbor, who he then renamed into King. And King is the last known member of the Lunarian race, a mysterious race with black wings, dark skin, light hair, and fire related powers. In fact, King is the one that teaches Kaido about the myths surrounding Joy Boy, which then leads Kaido to want to set up his base of operation inside Wano. And since the two were being experimented on in Punk Hazard, this is likely where Kaido first encountered Queen as well, since Queen previously worked with the other scientists of Mats. This is a research group created by Dr. Vegapunk. Another notable Kaido crewmate is who's who. This member of the Flying Six used to be a CP9 agent until Shanks stole the Gomu Gomu no Mi that he was responsible for guarding. After this, Who's Who was imprisoned by the government but was eventually freed and became a subordinate of Kaido, hiding his true identity. And later on, Kaido would encounter one of his fiercest enemies with Kozuki Odin in Wano and have the fight of his life. We already mentioned Odin a little bit earlier since he sailed together with Roger to Love Tail, but we have got to take a minute to talk about this Giga Chat's true past. After growing up as a troublemaker, Odin was named the daimyo of the lawless land of Kuri by his father, the shogun of the Wano country. This is where he gathered his nine retainers, the nine red scabbards. Hinemon, Benjiro, Kawamatsu, Ashura Doji, Nekomamushi, Inuarashi, Kiku, Raizo, and Kanjuro. Alongside with them though fought others as well like the bewitching ninja Shinobu. However, after a chance meeting with Whitebeard, Odin went to sea to explore the world outside of Wano. And while 
While they were sailing, he met his wife Toki, a time traveler from the Void Century, and they had their two children, Momonosuke and Hiori. Later, after swapping crews from Whitebeard to Roger, he then went to Love Tail and then finally returned to Wano with the goal of opening its borders. Unfortunately, in the time that he'd been gone, Orochi had pulled a power play with the backing of Kaido to gain control over Wano. Orochi was part of the Kurozumi clan who sought to take revenge on the Kozuki clan for past conflicts. He even went as far as installing Kanjuro, another secret Kurozumi, among Odin's retainers. Finally though, after a climactic battle, Kaido finally executed Odin while his retainers fled to the future using Toki's powers. This ended up sealing Orochi's position as the Shogun of Wano, and it led to terrible times on Wano for the common people, like for example Tama. However, during Luffy's brother Ace's time on Wano, he met Tama and gave her hope for the future. And while he was there, Ace also met Yamato, Kaido's son, who was inspired to adopt the name of Odin after seeing his bravery during his execution. However, despite being extremely supportive of Yamato's newfound identity, Kaido was otherwise a terrible father figure, locking her in explosive handcuffs and confining her to Onigashima for her entire life. So now we can move from Wano to Egghead Island, where we finally met the eccentric scientist Dr. Vegapunk. This genius was inspired to uncover and decipher the secret knowledge lost to the world after his friend and colleague, Professor Clover, was killed at Ohara. And as the leader and founder of the science group Mads, he also used to work with other crazy scientists such as Vince Smoke Judge, Caesar Clown, and Queen. Of course, while Vegapunk secretly works with the Revolutionary Army, he keeps up appearances by making technology for the world governments. And so let's talk about the Marine Admirals. Now we don't know much yet about the past of the original three Admirals, but Oda has drawn all three of them as children. Borsalino appears to have always just been as carefree as he is now. Sakazuki looks like he had a very rough childhood. I'm willing to bet that his absolute hatred of pirates was inspired from a very young age. And Kuzan appears to have been extremely disgruntled and possibly a victim of childhood alcoholism? Seriously, why is baby Aokiji carrying that bottle around? As for our other admirals, we don't actually quite know much about them yet. We do know that Fujitora blinded himself after seeing terrible atrocities in the world and we're super curious about what those atrocities were. And Aramaki, on the other hand, is still a complete mystery. We know nothing about him. And another even more mysterious character, indeed one of the most mysterious in the whole series, is Luffy's father Dragon, the most wanted man in the world and leader of the revolutionaries. Recently in Dr. Vegapunk's flashback, we learned that the destruction of Ohara is what inspired Dragon to join together with Emporio Ivankov and Bartholomew Kuma to form the revolutionary army. However, it's still to be seen what traumatic event caused Dragon to become an absentee father. Because it seems to be all too common in the One Piece world that just throwing kids in the jungle is the equivalent of a daycare. Of course, having the parent present isn't always a good thing though. Like for Big Mom's many, many traumatized children. At age 50, Perospero is the eldest son of Big Mom, followed by the triplets Katakuri, Oven, and Daifuku. Now we don't have full backstories on all of the Charlotte family because the most detail we get is from Katakuri, Brulee, and Pudding. For example, we know that Katakuri's other siblings would make fun of his huge donut-eating mouth, calling him a pelican eel. While well, they went with this obscure deep-sea creature instead of just calling him a pelican is a little bit of a mystery though. After Katakuri beat them up in response, his brothers took their revenge out on Brulee, scarring her face. Afterwards, Katakuri began covering up his mouth. In his mind, he was doing it to protect his siblings, as well as cultivating a serious image. Pudding, on the other hand, spent her entire childhood being ridiculed for her third eye, even being called hideous by her own mother. So really, the Charlottes aren't what you would exactly call a loving and supporting family. Let's now move on to the Shichibukai though. First, Gekko Moria. Moria was once an idealistic young pirate with his sights set on rising to the top of the One Piece world. However, after challenging the Emperor Kaido, his entire crew was mercilessly killed. And him losing his entire crew is what would inspire him to use a zombie army in the future because he can lose his crew and relive the pain if they're already dead. To replace his old crew, he gathered followers like Hawkback, a skilled surgeon with a twisted reputation. Because Hawkback helped Moria stitch his zombie army together, including Sindri, who was a famous stage actress in life that was resurrected as a zombie by the mad scientist. Absalom, another crew member, had his face partially spliced with a lion to better resemble the predator that he is. As we can see from 
this drawing though, Perona has pretty much been a goth girl since day one. It's not just a phase with her. Bartholomew Kuma, another warlord we encountered on Thrilla Bark, was known as a tyrant and served as the ruler of the Sorbet Kingdom. He's also Jewelry Bonnie's father, and he was also a prominent founding member of the Revolutionary Army, but was converted by Dr. Megapunk into a cyborg in service of the world government. Kuma was also used as the basis for the Pacifista robots as well. And we already got a glimpse that Kuma might have the single most traumatic past in the entire story of One Piece. Now, Crocodile was the very very first warlord that Luffy ever defeated. We can't tell a whole lot about Crocodile's past, but we do know that he has a grudge against Whitebeard. In addition, we also know that he has a deep dark secret that only Emporio Ivankov knows. And while working with Nico Robin, his organization Baroque Works decided to try and steal the throne of Alabasta while Crocodile secretly sought the ancient weapon Pluton. And it should be noted that Crocodile as a child is very gender ambiguous, but do with that information what you want. Crocodile plotted against Nefertari Cobra, the beloved ruler of the desert island Alabaster. His daughter, Princess Vivi, is even an honorary Straw Hat member after their travels together. And as one of the original 40 kingdoms that founded the world government, the Nefertaris regularly attend the reverie. As a child there, Vivi encountered Wapol, the monarch of the Drunk Kingdom, who showed his true colors by slapping her while she was still a child. And while in Alabaster, Vivi also grew up as a close friend of Koza, who would eventually lead the rebel army fueled by crocodiles, lice, and deceit. As children, Vivi joined Koza's Suna Suna Club, and later these brave kids once actually saved Vivi's life from kidnappers. Jinbei, the Knight of the Sea and current Straw Hat Pirate, got his start on the Sun Pirates under a captain called Fisher Tiger. Fisher Tiger was once enslaved by the Celestial Dragons. After his escape, he single-handedly scaled the Red Line back to Marijua and released the rest of the slaves there in a legendary one-man assault against the world government capital. Later, the Sun Pirates branded themselves with the symbol of the sun to cover up the celestial dragons brand that they were marked with as slaves. In fact, all members of the crew received a sun brand so that people couldn't differentiate who was a former slave and who was not. The sun symbol itself, of course, being related to the sun god Nika, who we now know was worshipped by slaves as a god of liberation. And the sun pirates also escorted a former slave who would then grow up to be the revolutionary koala back home as well. However, they were attacked by a squad of marines and Fisher Tiger was shot. Eventually, Fisher Tiger died needing a blood transfusion. However, due to his hatred of humans, he couldn't let himself receive blood from a human and passed away. Afterwards, Jinbei and Arlong fought for leadership of the Sun Pirates. In the end, Jinbei gained control of the crew, eventually becoming a warlord in order to better the terms between the government and Fishman Islands. Arlong, meanwhile, formed his own Arlong pirate crew and moved to the East Blue, where he constructed Arlong Park. Now, not a lot is known about Dracul Mihawk's past either. We know that he was a longtime rival and friend of Shanks, at least until Shanks lost his arm. We also know that before becoming a warlord, he was known as the Marine Hunter, which is pretty badass. Another former warlord, Don Quixote do Flamingo, is a Celestial Dragon. However, after his father left their position as a Celestial Dragon and they left the Holy Land, they moved to the sea only to be met with hatred and persecution by the people there. And so eventually, do Flamingo killed his own father, but it was too late to regain his position in Marijua. And so after being taken Taken in by treble, the young Doflamingo then began on his path to becoming an infamous and cruel pirate. And eventually, he claimed the kingdom of Dressrosa, the Don Quixote family's original ancestral home, as his own once again. Before Doflamingo's invasion, Dressrosa was a peaceful kingdom led by the king Riku. Kiros, a legendary gladiator who became captain of the royal guard, even married King Riku's daughter, and the two had their own daughter together named Princess Rebecca. The family lived happily until Doflamingo used his string powers to manipulate Riku, causing him to cut down his own citizens. Now, Kuros made a stand against the Don Quixote pirates, but one of Doflamingo's subordinates named Sugar used her devil fruit power to turn Kuros into a toy soldier. And a side effect of this power was that everyone forgot that Kuros had ever existed. However, the toy soldier version of Kuros still helped raise Rebecca, teaching her how to defend herself as Riku and Rebecca were both forced to compete in Dressrosa's Colosseum for their own survival and the Don Quixote family's entertainment. And another set of Oda's drawings from the SBS sections of the manga treat us to some of the Don Quixote family members as children as well. We can see that Treble has always been disgusting and also see a young Diamante, Pika, Lao Ji, Macvice, Giola, Gladius, and Monet. 
However, of course, the Don Quixote family member with the most fleshed out backstory is none other than Senor Ping. Senor Ping's backstory came seemingly out of nowhere, but managed to tug on fans' heartstrings and is considered among the best in the series. Long ago, Senor Ping fell in love with a woman named Russian. Together, they even had a child named Jimlet, but all along, Russian didn't know that her husband was part of a crime family and a pirate. Unfortunately, Jimlet passed away as an infant from illness, and afterwards, Russian learned the truth behind Senor Pink. She ran away, but was caught in a landslide, causing her to fall into a vegetative state. Senor Pink would visit her every single day in the hospital and one day would put on their baby's hat while expressing grief over their son. And his wife actually reacted by smiling despite being in a coma, which led to Senor Pink dressing more and more like a baby to get a reaction from his beloved wife. And so Senor Pink still dresses as a baby to this day. It's just a hard-boiled thing to do. But while Don Flamingo was a celestial dragon, our next Chichibukai was a victim of the celestial dragons. Boa Hancock, the empress of Amazon Lily, was enslaved by the celestial dragons as a child along with her two sisters. However, she was then later set free during Fisher Tiger's attack on Marijoa. Hancock has also known Silva's Rayleigh for a long time given that Rayleigh's spouse Shaki was the former empress of Amazon Lily as well. And later on she became a warlord in order to protect Amazon Lily from the world government. Blackbeard or Marshall D. Teach also had a terrible childhood as we can tell from this childhood drawing from Oda. Here we can see him crying under a crescent moon. As a young boy, he was taken in by Whitebeard and people quickly noticed his peculiar traits, such as the fact that he never sleeps. Now, we still have to learn a lot about his past, but since his ship's name was the Saber of Zebek, it's clear that he was somehow inspired by or related to Roxty Zebek. And his crewmates are all also notorious in their own rights. We don't know much about the past of Jesus Burgess, Doc Q, or Van Auger, but Lafitte was a former police officer. Talk about a uh, crooked cop. And Blackbeard's other crewmates were all recruited from Impel Down, which means that characters like Katarina Devon, Vasco Schott, San Juan Wolf, and Avalo Pizarro all have lengthy criminal records. Shiryu, on the other hand, wasn't just a prison of Impel Down, he was a former head jailer who was so cruel to the inmates that they had to imprison him as well. As a child, when the Whitebeard and Roger pirates met, Blackbeard also met a young Shanks. Now, Shanks was found by Roger in a treasure chest at God Valley and was then adopted by the crew. As a result, Shanks became a cabin boy along with Buggy, both of whom would grow up to become Yonko. And while aboard Roger's ship, Buggy accidentally consumed the Chop Chop Fruit, gaining his Devil Fruit powers. Before Roger's execution, Shanks inherited his captain's straw hat, and one day he would give the straw hat to Luffy. And sometime after Roger's death, Shanks would steal the Gomu Gomu no Mi from the Marines, which Luffy would then later eat. And now we move back to ancient history for the so far oldest flashback back chronologically in the series so far, where we learn about Kalgara and Mont Blanc Nolan. Mont Blanc Noland, also known as Noland the Liar, was a famous explorer. He befriended the dwarves of Greenbit, but also traveled to Jaya where he met the Shandians and saw the City of Gold. While he was there, he befriended the Shandian warrior Kalgara. He promised to return one day, but by the time that he had returned, Shandora had already been sent up to Skypea by the knock-up stream, and Noland was remembered by history as a great liar. In the present day story, Skypea would be conquered by Enel. Strange Usually, Enel and his crewmates were not from Skypea, but another sky island called Burka. After he gained his lightning powers, he destroyed Burka without a second thought and eventually wound up on Skypea and declared himself a god there. Mad Monk Uruj, another sky islander, is one of the supernovas. We don't know much about his backstory yet, but we do have this drawing of him where he was sporting the traditional Skypean hairstyle. We can only hope that when he returns in the series, he will bring this look back at some point because looking good. Cabone Beige was known as a famous mafioso back in the West Blue before entering the Grand Line, and according to this picture, he loved playing with blocks as a kid, building the castle that he would eventually become with his devil fruit. x on the other hand, had quite different ambitions. He didn't want to become a pirate, instead he dreamed of becoming a marine, a dream that would come true while he grew up to be a member of S.W.O.R.D., the secret marine organization. Basil Hawkins, God rest his soul, got 
got his practice as a tarot card reader very early on as well, it seems. And Scratchman Apu got in plenty of piano lessons before his teeth became an actual keyboard. Taking a detour from the supernovas though, we have our very own cyborg Frankie. He was born with the name Cuddy Flam, which explains why he'd want to undergo change to the much, much cooler sounding uh, Frankie. He was abandoned by his pirate parents and grew up on the island of shipwrights, Water 7. As a young inventor, Frankie constructed numerous battleships he named Battle Frankies. He and the future mayor, Iceberg, were raised by the legendary shipwright Tom, who constructed Gold D. Rogers' ship, the Oro Jackson. In fact, during Roger and Odin's voyage, they visited Tom and Odin even invited a young Frankie to join their crew. However, Frankie refused because he hated pirates on account of having been abandoned by pirates. Another parental figure to Frankie was Kokoro, a secret mermaid and secretary to Tom. Later in his life, Tom was then put on trial for constructing the Oro Jackson. To avoid execution, he agreed to build the sea train for the government. However, after construction was completed, in a plot to acquire the blueprints to the ancient weapon Pluton, ZP-9 Spandam used Frankie's battleships to stage an attack on Water 7. In the end, Tom received the blame for the attack and was sentenced to death. In an effort to stop ZP-9, Frankie hit Spandam's face with a rifle, permanently scarring him. And he also stood in the way of the sea train in an effort to stop it from taking Tom to Ennis Lobby, which horribly wounded Frankie. However, in a stroke of real genius, Frankie was able to rebuild himself into the cyborg that we know and love today. Speaking of Spandam though, he started in the family espionage business early, following in the footsteps of his father Spandine. He and the rest of the ZP9 members from the Ennis Lobby arc are also pictured here as kids. Confusingly, Spandam's pictured here with a young elephant, which is strange because Funk Freed was a sword that ate an elephant fruit. We can only guess that he received his unique sword at a very young age then, I guess? The various ZP9 members, Jabra, Kumadori, Bruno, Fukuro, Khalifa, Kaku, and Luchi were all trained as government spies and assassins from childhood on. The one that we know the most about, of course, is Rob Luchi himself. Apparently, he has known his pigeon Hatori since he was a very young boy, which begs the question, how long do pigeons actually live in the One Piece world? Luchi was made famous in an operation he conducted at age 13, where he mercilessly killed 500 soldiers that were taken hostage along with the pirates who were holding them. This proved his savage brand of dark justice to the world government and made him one of their deadliest assets. Luchi is a fan favorite villain and Hody Jones is not. In case you forgot, Hody Jones was the captain of the new Fishman pirates who served as the main antagonist of the Fishman Island arc. He once served as a soldier in King Neptune's army during Queen and Otohime's reign. Queen Orohime was a ruler who promoted promoted peace between the races despite the persecution Fishman had to face at the hands of humans. Her daughter, Shirahoshi, was revealed to be Poseidon, a member of the Fishman royal family with the power to command the Sea Kings. Thunder Deccan, one of Hody Jones's allies, touched Shirahoshi as a child using his Mark Mock fruit power, which allowed him to throw objects and weapons at her from anywhere, which forced the young princess to live most of her life in isolation within Ryukugo Kingdom's castle, which forced her to live most most of her life in isolation within Ryugu Kingdom's castle protected from random flying axes, which is kind of gruesome. Now, due to his hatred of humans, Hody Jones assassinated Queen Orohime to create conflict between the races. Inspired by his idol Arlong, he founded the new Fishman Pirates with the goal of taking over Fishman Island and eventually waging war against humans on the surface. Using the power of the energy steroids from the Tama Tobacco Box treasure, he and his crewmates gained incredible powers that that allowed them to almost take over Fishman Island itself. They just didn't count on those meddling straw hats showing up in the end. And our next straw hat crew member is Nico Robin, who like the rest of her crewmates has an extremely tragic backstory. Robin grew up on Ohara, the island of scholars. Professor Clover and the other researchers had uncovered the mysteries of the Void Century, the ancient kingdom, and the language written on the Poneglyphs, unbreakable blocks spread around the world that carry forgotten historical knowledge. One day, a giant marine named Jaguar D. Saul washed ashore and befriended Robin. He warned her that the marines were coming to attack Ohara to destroy and cover up the knowledge that the scholars had uncovered so far. Oh yeah, and one important detail is that Robin also grew up without parents very lonely on that island. However, after Saul's warning, Robin's mother, Nico Olvia, also returned to Ohara, but her, Professor Clover, and all the other residents of the island 
were killed by the Marines. Admiral Aokiji actually allowed Robin to escape, making her the sole survivor of the island, at least that's what we thought. And in order to make a living, she ended up joining with various pirate crews, eventually becoming Sir Crocodile second in command. She made it her goal to seek out all the Poneglyphs and learn the true history of the world, completing and carrying on the will and work of her friends. Pedro, a jaguar mink who accompanied Luffy to Whole Cake Island, was once the captain of the Nox Pirates. This group of minks made it their goal to search for those same Poneglyphs. However, on a mission to Big Mom's territory many years ago, he and his comrade Zeppo, who is Beppo's brother, were captured. Zeppo was killed, but Big Mom spared Pedro after he tore out his own eyes in exchange for her sparing a few years of his life. He did so because he wanted to be alive to see the dawn of the world. Eustace Kit, a supernova and a chief rival to Luffy, was born on a lawless island in the South Blue. Interestingly, his backstory was given to us almost entirely through an SBS section of the manga volume, so not in the story directly. On his island, there were four gang leaders, two of whom were Kid and Killer. Despite being rival gang leaders, the two were great friends and also had a crush on the very same girl, Victoria. However, when a criminal organization killed Victoria, Kit and Killer united the gangs of the island to take revenge. Their alliance would eventually become the Kid Pirates, ending with them setting sail and entering the Grand Line. During the time skip, Kit, as well as his allies Hawkins and Apu, even challenged Red Hair Shanks, which resulted in Kit losing an arm. So that makes two one-armed Red Hair characters in the series facing off again. Trafalgar Law, a fellow supernova and chief rival of Luffy and Kit, is the sole survivor of an island in the North Blue called Fleevens. Now, Fleevens was known as the White City due to its industry of mining ember lead. However, what no one told these people was that exposure to the substance had horrible consequences. The terrible ember lead disease plagued the people of Fleevens, and the world government murdered everyone who lived there as a way to prevent the spread of the disease. And what makes it even more tragic is that the disease wasn't even contagious. Law only survived by hiding within a pile of dead bodies that was being carted out of the city. Now, after his escape from Flevens, Law joined the Don Quixote Pirates. Surprisingly, Law wasn't the only kid hanging around Doflamingo, though. He befriended two other crew members close to his age, Baby Five and Buffalo. Now, we don't know much about Buffalo's past, but Baby Five had her own sad backstory. She was abandoned by her mother, who saw her as useless. It's probable that she's called Baby Five because she was literally her mother's fifth baby. Her mom didn't even care enough to give her an actual real name, just a number. And so to this day, she's obsessed with serving others and clings to anyone who shows her the smallest bit of affection and kindness. Like many things in One Piece, it's played off as a joke, but it's an actual really unsettling and heartbreaking thing when you really think about it. However, Law had one person in his life that he was much closer to than the other kids in his age. He befriended Doflamingo's brother, Rosinante, or Corazon who was a secret marine plotting against his brother's rise to power. Knowing that Law's ember lead disease could be cured by a devil fruit called the Ope Ope no Mi, Doflamingo made plans to steal the fruit. However, Doflamingo secretly wanted Law to eat the fruit so that he could use its immortality surgery power to grant Doflamingo eternal life. And so Corazon made a plan to steal the fruit for Law first and then succeeded with that, but at the cost of his own life. Law narrowly avoided being recaptured by the Doflamingo pirates and eventually met Beppo, Shachi, and Penguin, starting the Heart Pirates with the goal of eventually taking down Doflamingo. Cavendish, the captain of the beautiful pirates, was an up-and-coming superstar in the pirate world. However, after the worst generation made their debut, so Luffy, Law, Kit, and Co. stole the spotlight, causing Cavendish to hold a really bad grudge. Funny then that he did end up in Luffy's grand fleet. Cavendish is also possessed by a demon or a curse called Hakuba that takes over his body whenever he falls asleep. Still, no explanation at all on how he ended up with this affliction, but we can guess that it has something to do with his cursed sword Durandai. And Bartolomeo was another Colosseum contender who, unlike Cavendish, wants nothing more than be working under Luffy. Ever since he saw Luffy's failed execution in Loketown at the hands of Buggy, Bartolomeo has been the number one straw hat superfan. As head of 
the Bardo Club, he's collected every single bouncy poster and followed every piece of the news throughout Luffy's journey, forming an entire pirate crew out of Luffy Straw Hat fans. He just competed in the Colosseum in order to win the Flame Flame Fruit back for Luffy and ended up meeting his idol in the process. Moving on to someone completely different, Duval, the head of the Rosie Life Riders. He was born into terrible circumstances. Namely, his face looked exactly like the Marine's terrible Sanji drawing on his wanted poster. Being mistaken for Sanji led to Duval living a life on the run and constantly wearing a helmet to hide his true identity. Thankfully, Sanji kicked his face into a new handsome shape, causing him to turn his life around. Completely forgot that that entire thing happened. <laughs> Jewelry Bonnie is another one of the supernova who, according to this childhood drawing, has always had a very healthy appetite. Bonnie is also the princess of the Sorbet Kingdom since she is Kuma's daughter. And there is clearly a lot more coming for her as well. Ace and Sabo, Luffy's adoptive brothers, both grew up in the Goa Kingdom but under very different circumstances. Ace was born as the son of pirate King Goldie Roger, but to protect Ace, Garb raised him as his own grandson and hid his true parentage. Sabo, however, was the son of a noble who longed for freedom outside of the niceties of upper class life. And just one thing in Sabo's life was even worse to deal with than the unbearable customs of nobility. His adopted brother Steli, who would eventually become the ruler of the Goa Kingdom and who has one of the most punchable faces in all of One Piece. Ace and Sabo, along with their younger brother Luffy, adventured in the jungles of their home island and dreamed of setting sail as pirates together. But everything changed when a celestial dragon was scheduled to visit the kingdom. You see, the Goa Kingdom, as many places in One Piece, is home to an enormous class divide. The poor people of this society were forced to live in a massive junkyard known as the Great Terminal and lived off the scraps of the nobles. And so in order to avoid the Celestial Dragon seeing these impoverished people, the nobles conspired to burn the Great Terminal and all of the people in it to the ground. Sabo actually escaped Goa and set sail with the goal of becoming a pirate, but his makeshift vessel was shot down by the Celestial Dragons arriving and he was mortally wounded. Thankfully, Monkey D. Dragon and his revolutionaries happened to find the unconscious Sabo. Not knowing that Sabo was the brother of his biological son Luffy, Dragon raised him and Sabo eventually became the second in command of the revolutionary army. Ace, on the other hand, grew up to become a famous pirate in his own right, becoming Whitebeard's fourth division commander. In fact, Whitebeard believed that Ace would become the king of the pirates one day. Unfortunately, after Blackbeard killed one of the fellow division commanders in order to steal the darkness fruit, Ace set off in pursuit, which would eventually result in his defeat and capture. Noronoa Zoro, the swordsman of the Straw Hat crew, grew up in Shimotsuke village and is descended from the samurai that fled Wano country after Orochi's takeover. As a kid, he trained hard to overtake his rival Kuina at swordsmanship. However, after her death at a young age, he swore that he would achieve their dream of becoming the world's strongest swordsman. Sanji actually gets not one but two backstories for the price of one. Originally, as a prince of the Jerma kingdom, he was a result of experimentation by his father, Windsmoke Judge. His siblings, who had been deprived of their emotions, tormented him mercilessly. Finally, after he was freed from the cruelty of the Windsmokes, he found himself in the East Blue. And while in the East Blue, he was working on a ship as a cook. He was endlessly teased for his dream of finding the All Blue, a sea that brought together fish from all parts of the world, a chef's dream. The ship was then attacked by pirates, but when a terrible storm nearly drowned Sanji, the pirate captain Zef saved him. Zef saved Sanji because he'd overheard his dream and because he also believed in the All Blue. After the shipwreck, the pair were deserted on a small island. Zef separated all the food they had into two portions and divided the island in half so that each of them could serve as a lookout in the opposite direction. Soon, Sanji's rations were completely depleted and he began to starve. When he noticed that Zef's food bag was still nearly full, he attempted to steal the old man's food only to realize that the bag was full of treasure, not food. Zef had given Sanji all of the food and had only survived by eating his own leg. Finally, the two were rescued and they found a Baratie, the floating restaurant. Nami and her sister Nojiko were both found as babies by a marine named Belmere. They grew up peacefully in their village, but everything changed when Arlong decided to make it the base of his operations. Arlong and his underlings Hachan, Chu, and Kurobi had left the Sun Pirates to form their own crew. Arlong believed in fishmen's supremacy over humans and built Arlong Park as his own twisted parallel to Saba Odi Park, 
a place where he and his fellow fishermen were never allowed to enter as children. Arlong made the citizens of Kokuyashi village pay for their lives. However, Belmere could only afford to pay for Nami's and Nojiko's lives and the two children saw Arlong shoot their adoptive mother to death in front of them. Seeing Nami's gift for navigation and map making, Arlong held her village for ransom, saying that he would release the people there if she worked for him and bought the village back for 100 million berries. Unfortunately, he had no intention of ever keeping his end of the bargain. Usopp from Syrup Village is the son of Yasop, one of Shanks' crew members. When he was young, his mother died of an illness. Usopp would make a habit of lying to the villagers, warning that pirates were coming, mainly in the hope that one day his father truly would return. With his gift for storytelling, he befriended Kaya, a wealthy girl in the village. One day, he dreamed of becoming a brave warrior of the sea like his father, and once he joined Luffy, he finally had the chance to make his dream reality. Now, we already learned a bunch about Luffy's backstory when we discussed Ace and Sabo, but let's talk about how Luffy got his devil fruit and his dream of becoming a great pirate. We met Luffy as a young boy in Fusha Village. He loved hanging out at the local bar with his hero, a pirate called Red Haired Shanks. He always begged Shanks to let him join his crew, but he was never allowed since he was just a little kid. One day, Luffy took a bite of a small devil fruit called the Gobu Gomu no Mi that Shanks had stolen from a government ship. And doing so, apparently at least, gave him rubber powers. Later, when a mountain bandit threatened Luffy's life, Shanks got serious. He even sacrificed his own arm to save Luffy from a sea king. Shanks once again voyaged away, but gave Luffy his straw hat, asking him to return it to him one day once he had become a great pirate. This hat has become Luffy's treasure. So many of the traits that Shanks embodied are qualities that Luffy takes on in the main story. On the other hand, Chopper, the youngest straw hat, is a blue-nosed reindeer who gained human intelligence. Because of that, the other reindeer thought of him as a freak. Meanwhile, the humans of Drum Kingdom mostly saw him as a monster. However, Chopper was then treated with kindness by Dr. Hirolok, a quack doctor from the island. In the coming years, Chopper studied medicine under Hirolok, developing the goal of one day curing every disease in the world. However, things turned for the worse in Drum Island when Wapol took power finally. He monopolized Drum Kingdom's medical expertise by taking the 20 best doctors for himself and banishing or executing the rest. At this time, Hirolok was facing a terminal disease. Chopper tried to cure him using a poisonous mushroom that he mistakenly thought was a medicine. However, to not have Chopper feel responsible for his death, he took his own life by drinking one of his failed concoctions after giving a speech to Wapol and his men. Chopper, meanwhile, continued his studies under Dr. Kureha until the day that he finally met the Straw Hat Pirates. The reason why a reindeer like Chopper was able to gain human-like intelligence was because he ate the human human devil fruit. In fact, many of the characters that we've explained so far have devil fruit abilities as well. And since you actually watched a whole video about every single backstory in One Piece, you will definitely enjoy this video where I explain every single devil fruit ability in One Piece as well. Thanks for watching.